Well, hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to another episode of a Not The Movie Mini Reviews. I am currently driving down the road and figured I'd spend a little time with you and talk about a movie that, man, it's one of those movies that I've been wanting to see for, I don't know, five or six years now. And the best way I can describe this movie, which is Neon Maniacs from 1986. Uh, remember when you were a teenager and he always dreamed about, I don't know, making out with that particular other person that you're interested in and you imagine how that's going to be. And then when you finally do, you kind of go, yuck. <laughs> That's uh, that's pretty much this movie. I have no idea what I just watched. Uh, if Short Bus Cinema was still going, uh, this movie would have definitely been on there, and Johnny and I would have ripped this thing apart. I might could do it by myself. I don't know. But for the most part, like I said, Neon Maniacs is the name of the movie. I was always intrigued because of the name, of course, because 80s, neon, yeah, give it to me. Maniacs, well, sure, who doesn't like the word maniac in any kind of title? Even songs, she's a maniac, right? So you combine the two together and you've got, you know, a great combination for a name of a movie. And the artwork kind of pulls you in too because you get all these disfigured faces. One's wearing like a, I don't know, I don't know if it's a, Chinese army helmet from back in the Ming Dynasty days or whatever. It's all those cool things you like about the 80s. Uh, first off, there's nothing neon about these maniacs. <laughs> Why they call it neon maniacs? I don't know. Matter of fact, you're going to hear me say I don't know a lot in this review because... Seriously, I don't know. I don't even know what I just finished watching, to be honest. But I'll try to tell you anyways. For the most part, the beginning of this movie, they give you kind of a kind of overview narrative of the, I, I don't know, something about when the evil happens, then they'll have to face the neon maniacs. Some bull crap that really doesn't make any sense. And then it cuts to this guy that's hanging out in front of the Golden Gate, Gate Bridge and he finds something, some kind of bone or I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know what it is he finds. But there's like trading cards <laughs> of these neon maniacs with it. Either that or there's just like promo pictures. No idea. But he picks this thing up and he's flicking through the pictures and, I mean, the first thing I thought was, like, these are trader cards or lobby cards or... I don't know. I really don't know. Needless to say, dude gets killed. Now, let's talk about this, these neon maniacs. They should have just been called toxic maniacs. I don't know. Nuclear maniacs. Uh, because but I, don't even, I don't even know if it's toxic waste that's made them into these things, there's really no indication whatsoever what these things are. Except, this is the brilliance of this movie. If you want to, that's sarcastic, folks. Uh, there's the army neon maniac. There's the biker neon maniac. There's the uh, police maniac. There's an Indian maniac. You know what this is? This is the village people, <laughs> but they're uh, killers. They're toxic-induced, you know, nuclear waste-induced village people that go around that are all mutated, killing people. That's really the only explanation. The, the military guy, the military maniac looks like Gary Busey, for one thing. But uh, what this all comes down to is... There's a group of teenagers that are obviously a lot older than they're supposed to be. Uh, 
are hanging out, parking. They all split and go their own separate ways, and they're all, you know, going to make out and all this stuff. And the maniacs show up and start just slicing and dicing. Sounds cool, but it's not. Uh, I will give this movie some points for some pretty decent effects. If, if this movie has anything to offer, that's what it is. But anyways, they're slicing and dicing, and one girl is left alive. She goes back and tells somebody that these crazy figures came out of nowhere and started hacking all of her friends. The parents of all the friends don't believe her because they, I guess they didn't find the bodies? We don't know. It would seem pretty apparent that there would be traces of everything, though, because you're slicing off heads and arms, disemboweling people, which, again, sounds a lot cooler than it really is in this movie. And you're leaving blood on the ground, on the trees, on the leaves, all that kind of stuff, right? Apparently, this is close to Halloween. Doesn't really say, I don't know. I just know that everybody later on is dressed up like it's Halloween, but they never really say it's Halloween. I don't know. But anyways, there's not a trace. Uh, the cops go out there. They can't find anything except this goo that they're kind of find laying around. Now, we've got another character in this movie who's this young girl who's basically Corey Feldman in Friday the 13th Part 4, right? She's intrigued with monsters. She wants to make monster movies. She makes masks. She's into all this stuff. She gets intrigued by the story, goes out and finds some of the goo herself. Why? I don't know, because it really leads to nothing. They never tell you what the stuff is. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, this movie it doesn't give you anything. Uh, it's, it's just this goo, they're going to send it off and have scientists look at it, and we never hear back from the scientists about anything. Unless this is an edited version and they cut all this stuff out. Not that it would really matter. But anyways. Uh, the girl starts digging into the problem. Because, you know, that's that's what these kids do. They're smarter than, than the police and grown-ups and all that. Because that's the 80s, right? But uh, she discovers that the only way to kill these things is with water. That's how dangerous of a threat these things are. So I go back to the idea of them, you know, being out here parking and stuff. You know, somebody could have just started whizzing on them, and it might have stopped the whole problem. I don't know. <laughs> but that's just how goofy this thing is. But anyways, one tries to attack her in the middle of the night. Oh, here's the other thing, too. You know, the one girl that survives kind of gets a boyfriend who believes her. He's, he's hot on her in school. Uh, takes up for her because other kids don't believe that she, they think she's telling a lie about all this stuff and she's behind all of it somehow. You know, stuff that don't really matter. And uh, But he ends up kind of hooking up with her and they go to a movie or whatever. But the thing is, well, they don't go to the movie. They're planning on going to the movie and that all falls through because the vehicle breaks down. But these creatures, I guess, Yes, can sense who you are and where you are, and they specifically go after her. Matter of fact, she's out in the swimming pool one night, just relaxing, and there's, oh, there's a caveman neon maniac. Why? I don't know! But he's hanging out poolside watching her, <laughs> and she jumps in the water. He, like, comes up like he's going to grab her, and she jumps in the water and takes off swimming, and he throws a fit. And I'm going, why? Because can't you just like hide in a bush and wait till she comes back over and grab her? I mean, he acts like this was his one chance and he blew it. Anyways, there's all this stuff that just doesn't go anywhere. But they come up with this great idea, since water will destroy him. By the way, the, the, the young girl who's supposed to be, I don't know, 13, 14, she's wearing her cap off to the side, she's spunky, all this kind of stuff. She's every bit of 27 years old. Not 18 by any means. <laughs> Possibly the oldest person in the movie is playing the youngest person in the movie. So, I, I don't know what to tell you on this one. Uh, anyways, 
they decide that this is the, <laughs> they decide on Halloween night because at school they're going to have a battle of the bands. That's right. The the girl that was attacked earlier and her newfound boyfriend, he has a band. And he's in a band called The Outlaws. And just like everything else in this movie, they are anything but outlaws. If anything, they're a Spandau Ballet meets Huey Lewis type band. And they're going up against another band called Jaded, which is some guys trying to be a hair metal band, and the lead singer is trying his best Robert Plant imitation he can do, which is about as good as what the rest of this movie is. Um, they decide that we're going to have this battle of the bands, and we're going to give everybody squirt guns. Now think about this. <laughs> if you knew that water destroyed these things, why would you have them come to a huge event where there's a lot of people, where they could literally lay waste to a bunch of people? That's the whole point of doing it, I know, It's as far as the storytelling. But as somebody trying to solve the problem, you know where they're coming from. You've seen them come out of the bridge. Why wouldn't you just take, I don't know, a truck and, I don't know, 15 canisters? Or how about just some buckets of water? You could literally do a, a Power Twins thing here and just <laughs> turn into a bucket of water. You could drive by like you do in the old Halloween gags that you used to do. You know, drive by, but when one of them comes out, you just throw a bucket of water on them. Problem solved. But no, 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 we're not going to do that. We are going to have a shindig where we get everybody in the school in there all dressed up in Halloween costumes. That way, when these neon maniacs that are not neon at all show up, they're going to blend in with the crowd. Brilliant idea. Not to mention the main guy that's involved in this is playing in a band that's going to compete. Do you think his mind is worried <laughs> or focused on stopping these bad guys? Absolutely not. He's trying to remember the words to his Muzak version of a Toto song. I just, I can't believe the stupidity of this movie. It really took me out of it because there's not enough explanation whatsoever on anything. And I know that's not the purpose of the film. The film is to get the bad guys and let them kill a bunch of people and then you try to resolve the problem. Uh, so needless to say, the band is playing. The, the maniacs show up. Nobody notices. And I don't know. They, they start slicing and dicing. And the only one that has any sense whatsoever is the young girl that's 27, that's supposed to be 12, grabs the fire hose. <gasps> what an idea. And just start spraying everybody. Smartest person in the room, right? Again, it's that logic that we used in the 80s for all this kind of stuff. Uh, again, just the idea of making this all happen at a battle of the bands contest at a high school. Yes, I know your, your core audience is teenagers. But this is pretty dang stupid. When you could literally drive by with a bucket of water once a night. And just have the girl standing out there so they'll come out because they obviously can sense her because they follow her and even ride on a subway chasing her. Yeah, that's, I mean, and there's no, I mean, I repeat, no explanation whatsoever, ever, on what these things are, where they came from, why they mutated, nothing. Absolutely nothing. So, uh, you know, so the young girl is now spraying them down and they're melting, right? And then <laughs> the, the main girl and the guy get away and they're running up a flight of stairs at the school and there's another water hose that he pulls off the wall and he forces the water down a flight of stairs because here comes a neon maniac and he electrocutes to death because of the water. Why? I don't know. Because... I don't know that any of them's a robot. They're all mutated things. So why did this guy electrocute? It makes no sense. So, they get away from all that. They kind of save the day, I guess. But then they go to the sheriff's office 
or the police office and they tell the sheriff or the police officer, whatever he is, what all happened. He don't believe them, says, if you're wrong on this, then you're all toast. They go out to the bridge, they open up the door, and they don't find anything that's in there where they said the neon maniacs were. So he has the kids uh, taken away, tells them to leave. They get the fire truck out of there, which they had to tow the fire truck to spray down everybody the water hose. What a concept. But then uh, the kids leave, and the detective's out there by himself, and he sees something in the back of one of the trucks, and he opens it up, and a one-eyed dinosaur with a meat hook stabs him with the meat hook and kills the, the sheriff. That's it. <laughs> That's this movie. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like really anything about it. I mean, like I said, the effects ain't too bad, but I was constantly watching to see how much time was left with this thing. I thought, man, this is not going to end. And when it ended, I don't know. I wanted my money back, even though I watched it for free. So, uh, I don't know. Some of you may like this movie. I probably would have loved this if I would have seen this and I was 13. But watching it now, this is not good at all, man. Um, very, very disappointed. You may love this film, and I hope you do. I hope somebody does, because it needs love. I don't want to totally bash this movie, because I, I hate doing that. But there is no context whatsoever to this movie. So, I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5. Very border a 1 on this, but at least it did have some good effects. And, I don't know, just like the song that the... Uh, the hair metal band was singing at the contest was we've had enough i'd had enough too with this one so i was glad it was over uh let me know your thoughts on this if you like this movie more power to you i can see where you would like this in a party setting or something but there's just not enough context whatsoever for me to even put two and two together of why this movie is somehow likable so that's my take on this one uh if you like this movie I'm sorry if I disappointed you, or if I made you upset, or offended you, but, you know, toxic village people go around killing people, I don't know, just not enough for me. So there you go, folks. That's it for this edition. We will see you next time. Adios.